Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class. Yay, it's February. Can you believe it? The t time just flies, especially when you're older. Um, it's February uh, 2nd, Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022 at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm coming to you live. If you want to join in on the live comments, make sure that you're logged into your YouTube account um, and then you can you can start typing away and interact with everybody. We do have a special person with us this time, and most of the time, her name is Trisha Josephs, and she's going to be my moderator. So she actually joins in to answer questions and guide you to the right places. Um, so if you'd like to actually address her personally so that she can see your question, uh, maybe she's missing it, you're posting something and she doesn't see it, then you can tag her by typing the at sign, so the A with the circle around it, and then start typing T-R-I-C-I-A, and her name should pop up. You can click on it, Trisha Josephs, and she'll be able to see it because it'll like brighten up for her. Um, what else do I want to say? Uh, oh, commenting is actually encouraged because we give prizes at the end too. So tell me where you're from. Tell me about your stamping experience. Give me um, tips that you have because I always love learning from you as well. Um, what else? Oh, I love it when people tell me what they're doing at the same time that they're watching the live. Like, what are you doing to multitask? Are you at work trying to avoid getting caught? <laughs> Which a lot of you are, it's so funny. Um, are you cooking at the same time? Are you taking care of your pet? Or what, what are you, what's going on in your world? Um, I love, love learning about you. So um, sit back and enjoy or log in and chat um, and enjoy. Either way, uh, if you are not watching this live, you can comment after the live is over. And there's a separate comment section for that that appears when the live ends and um, those people also get entered into a prize drawing within the week um, by the next time i do a live i draw from those comments and actually trisha that was one thing i forgot i knew i was forgetting something i'm looking at my list <laughs> and i'm like what did i forget i feel i have to go live right now i just I, I know i'm missing something and there's probably more than just this one thing but trisha would you do me a favor oh no i did it i did it never mind i took care of it i think i took care of it this morning <laughs> about three hours ago so if you didn't comment on last week's um video uh until like three hours before this one started then sorry you're not in on that drawing but um i had to do it this morning earlier never mind i got the winner i have i have the person picked out um oh let's just go ahead and pull up the comments then from last week so that you can see what people chimed in about that's always fun there they are okay so you can see oh and my head is too big hang on because <laughs> we gotta see everybody's comments there i shrunk myself um so these are comments that i picked and ha highlighted from last week's video Again, I love it when people tell me that they're watching for the first time. Um, Deb has watched many times, but she never commented until last week. So thank you, Deb, for commenting, um, telling me what you're doing at the same time. I love, like, all over the world. Um, a couple people from the UK chimed in, Canada, um, Longview, Washington, and telling me about your weather. So much fun to read. Um, what else? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and telling me, shh, like Sally was working, so that's, yeah. Anyways, I'm not going to say her name too too much louder. Like, I'm not going to say her last name. There, I don't want to get her in trouble. Um, what else uh, did I want to comment about? I think it was the last four comments. So, um, going to have to rewatch the video and screenshot some of these ideas. So, Karen and anybody else who saw the multiple rainbow cards that I shared last week, um, those are actually in the blog post right before last week. So if you click on the rainbow card link in my YouTube channel, if you click on that, there's a, in the, in the description section, there's a, a link where you can click on, um, to see the blog post. And then you just go back one more day and you'll be able to see all of those cards. So you don't have to take screenshots of them. You don't have to rewatch the video to take screenshots of all those cards. They are photographed and shared already. Um, Mary said, oh, pe Paper Pumpkin. Okay, so then Paper Pumpkin got br brought up by several of you because we were talking about kits at one point, I think. 
I don't know. Anyways, I talk about everything. But Paper Pumpkin is delayed this month. So if you were a January subscriber, you had to subscribe by what? The 10th, right? And then some kits started processing on the 14th, which was three days later than normal, um, starting shipping out like 15th, 16th. But not all of them shipped out. Um, then a good majority of them started processing again. I want to say it was like 10 days later because Stampin' Up! had some delayed stuff, you know, that they couldn't get into all the kits. It's, it's COVID, you guys. It's the darn pandemic. So don't get mad at Stampin' Up! They are doing their darndest to make sure that we are taken care of with all of our stuff. Um, but yes, delays um, happen. And so the paper, the next surge of paper pumpkin shipments got um, sent out around the 24th. I personally, like my personal kits, arrived just this Monday. Um, some others were arriving yesterday in my area. So try not to stress if you don't have your kit yet from January, <laughs> okay? Um, reach out to your demonstrator and have them track it if you feel like it's lost, but just hang in there because a whole bunch of them are just arriving this week. Now, why did I have alternates already shared because I had a really gracious subscriber send one of their kits to me. And so I was able to create with that early and share my video. Um, so that's how that happened. And why not leave the white cardstock in one piece? Great idea, Luann. So I guess I didn't do that because I was sharing with you my tips for multiple creations and if you were going to make that rainbow card multiple times it's actually good to have it cut into two pieces first so that you could um you could get the edges to over the the not the edges the arches of the rainbow to connect the same way do you remember that overlapping technique that i taught but yes if you're only going to make one of these cards do it the way luann said that was super wise <laughs> all right so what is next? We are going to share supplies and measurements because what are we making today, Rachel? You just keep talking. Let me show you. Here it is. All right, we're going to be making um, some bright and bold cards. Those are two cards that I'm going to share and walk you through. And then I'm going to show you and give you tips on a third style. Um, all right, so you don't have to take a screenshot of this. This PDF is actually going to be accessible in the blog post after this video ends. Um, uh, actually, not right after this video ends, sorry. We are connected to uh, the all-star blog hop again this week. So, um, so you're going to see my blog post. There's a link in the description of the video. You're gonna see my blog post go live at 3 p.m. Central Time. So that's approximately four hours from now. Um, you know, so you can adjust what time zone you're in. Then you can click on that link. You can see photos, all the photos of this project. You can see the measurements again. You can see the supply list and all the supplies are linked to my online store. So you can shop if you'd like. Um, the video will be embedded in there and you can print off this PDF. So don't, don't worry about screenshotting it. I've got the date in there and look at that date. 2222. Two, two, two. Isn't that fun? What a fun date. So um, go ahead and copy that if you'd like to, or just wait. All right, now we're gonna move to the desktop because what are we sharing today? We're sharing a suite. Anytime I do a blog hop post, a video about um, the blog hop, the, um, the all-star group that I'm in, we do, and here, let me do this here. Oh, I gotta make my head a little bit bigger. Hang on. And I'm enlarging it because some people read my lips. So we want to make sure that I'm seen a little bit here. Okay, so we're, we're doing a blog hop today that starts at 3 p.m. Central Time. And um, the reason why we do that is because we do this whole big tutorial bundle. We offer it monthly. And you can get tons of really fun, artistically created um, projects and all the um, information from them. There are video explanations of all of those projects. And so this team of 12 demonstrators also do a blog hop. And that's today. And so we're taking the same suite that we did our February tutorial on and we are 
showing you even more ideas. I'm showing you two simple cards start to finish and then showing you one more that I did with them. Um, I'm not sure what projects everybody's going to be creating. I'll find out at three o'clock as well. And then, um, and then you'll want to, of course, nab up that tutorial. So this is the suite artfully composed. It's got a stamp set, set of dies, these awesome um, embellishments called faux sea glass shapes, some vellum, and some designer paper, and then this beautiful uh, ribbon that can fray really cool um, in different ways. So white frayed ribbon. Let me show you the ribbon first since I might forget. So you can take, and you can just put it on your card this way. Let's zoom in a bit here. Uh, there we go. So you can take and put it on your card this way. You can tie it in a knot, a bow. It's pretty thick though. So um, putting it as a, a strip on a card is gonna save you on postage. But you can also take and pull the end to get the twine from it. So fun. Um, or you can take and trim this off. Let me grab my trim, my snips here. You can take and have this piece here, sorry, let me clean it up a bit, and put that on a card. So you can have like different ways of using that ribbon. We are not using that ribbon today. We are also not using the um, faux sea glass shapes, even though um, they're really, really cool. And it's one of my most favorite embellishments. Um, it comes in Old Olive, Bermuda Bay, and then like a clearish color, like a white. But they're all sort of transparent and they're very um, light, light shades of the colors. So you can kind of coordinate them with other things too. Like you could coordinate this with Granny Apple Green, um, uh, Coastal Cabana. Did I say Coastal Cabana? I think these are Bermuda Bay. Um, but anyways, so those are fun. Um, I use both of those in my All Star Tutorial card, which is a bookmark card. And then... This is the stamp set. So as I show you the stamp set images, you can see that there's different kinds of art designs in them. This one is a distinctive design in that you have the dark and light colors in them. We've talked about that a couple of videos ago. Then you have a bold one, almost a solid stamp, and then you have this bold outline, um, some sentiments, and then you have this fun image here. So it's like an eclectic mix, um, great for collage stamping, that sort of thing. Uh, this is just kind of like a verse that's kind of hard to read. And then we have the dies and lots of different kinds of dies. You have an edgelet die. You have dies that are detailed that do like a, an outline kind of shape. Then you have dies that do kind of an imprint in the cardstock. Um, you have dies that are uh, framelit dies so you can cut out your images. So it's really, the word eclectic is definitely a great way to explain it. Um, here's just a few examples of some of the die cut shapes that you can get with this. We're not going to be using the dies. We're not going to be using the ribbon. We're not going to be using the embellishments. I'm going to set them back here. But we are going to use the vellum and we're going to use the designer paper. And oh boy, let's zoom out. Okay, so the vellum, very fun and unique too. A map, like there's maps in there. There's this newsprint looking design. And then there's um, this one here that has kind of that same um, hard to read script, but it's going in all these different directions. Black, white, black, white, black, white. Um, I don't know, just kind of all different things that you just kind of mash together in this suite. It's, it's definitely a fun suite to do, to play around with. We're going to put that piece over there because we're going to need it. And then here are the designer papers. And there's lots of bold, bright, leafy, tropical designs. Speaking of tropical, I think I saw someone chime in about my necklace. I got this necklace from Cheryl Lee, some matching earrings. I love it. I um, usually wear it with my, my white kind of slouchy turtleneck though. So I don't know if it's really going with my outfit, but I had to wear greens and then I had to wear my tropical leaf necklace and earrings that match the paper. <laughs> and here's the backside. So more like a um, monochromatic, real um, subtle print kind of look, okay? Let's pull in our vellum. We're gonna use this for the card base, okay? So let's go ahead and cut. We want a four and a quarter inch wide piece, at least here in the US. Did you notice I had measurements in um, centimeters also on there for the two cards? Yay, Rachel. Um, now we're gonna open it up this way 
And we want in the US our card base to be 11 inches this direction. So four and a quarter by 11. Save this little piece. You'll probably use it somewhere, right? And then we're going to score it. This is where I want to tell you to be very careful. Vellum is not the ideal thing to use for card bases because it can tear easily if it's folded too much, especially if you fold in one direction and then decide to fold in the other direction. So what we want to do is we want to look to see what our um, correct side of our vellum is. There is an up, there is a down. You can kind of see when you angle it in the light which side shines the most. And this is actually the, the, the side I want. So I'm going to press into my um, vellum. Now I want to remember this here. You know what? No, I want to go this way. I'm going upside down and I'm going to press into it because what it's going to do is it's going to make an indent that makes my card stock want to go this way, like upward, right? So I want it to bend this way. So vellum, you almost want to score upside down, opposite of what you do with cardstock. Because again, you only want to put the creases in one direction. And then when you press with your scoring blade, you want to press really slowly, really carefully. Um, don't go too deep. And now you can see the score line in there. And we're going to take and carefully, and it's just a guide. It's not going to be a deep score line because we don't want to break our paper. And I, when I say break, I'm serious, it breaks it. Okay, now we can crease. And I just warn you, do not open really flat or bend it the opposite way. So this is what happens when that happens. I mean, it just literally wants to tear. It's very fragile. It's not the ideal card base paper. I'll just say that. Now we're gonna grab our stamps. We have two stamps that we're gonna use from the stamp set. And we're going to use our ink pad Evening Evergreen. Now you could do this on a white card base easily, but I think the beauty of this card is the fact that we are using vellum. Um, so let's go ahead and stamp. This is going to be our inside sentiment, sending all the hugs. And when you ink up your stamp, you literally are just tapping it. We have ink pads that are super juicy here at Stampin' Up. So, you want to make sure that you are just lightly tapping. Then you can look at the bottom of your stamp to make sure all the darkness is on the image. Um, use your grid paper if you need to for guidance to make sure you are going straight and centered. And we're going to press it down firm. If you rock back and forth and you're one of those people that ink up your stamps too hard, you can actually um, create kind of a little halo I'm going to move this over a bit here. You can kind of create like this little halo that goes around because you might get ink on the edges of your stamp. So be really careful about that. Just be cognizant. Um, we need our scrap. I did have a scrap. Where did my scrap go? Hang on. We're going to grab a scrap of our thick white. And now we're going to stamp the word thank you on this and I'm not worried about stamping it straight because we're going to punch this out. When you have a red rubber stamp like we're using now instead of the totally clear kind, the uh, photopolymer kind, um, it's best to stamp first and then to punch after. If you have the clear you could definitely do your punching um, before because you're going to be able to see all the way through that stamp. So now we've got that and we're going to bring in our designer paper that's already cut to the same size. These pieces are the same. They are three and a half inches tall by four and a quarter inches wide. We've got our card base. We've got our thanks. Um, and now we're going to bring in uh, these pieces from the Expressions and in Ink Ephemera pack. So it's this pack of gold foil um, accent pieces. And then um, there's like these really cool, I don't know, frame pieces that you might want to call them frames. I don't know. They're, they're different and they're very delicate. And I have discovered a way to add them that um, is stress-free. So <laughs> we're just removing all the negative portions of it, the parts that we don't need. So we have this fun 
hexagon, right? And I want my hexagon to go this way, up and down, because the tag punch, as you can see, fits in there really well. I don't like how tall it is though, so I'm going to trim it a bit. I'm going to trim it about here and here and here and here. I'm just eyeballing. I got about a centimeter or half of an inch extension coming down here and coming up here. It, it might even be a little less. I don't know. I'm also going to, oh, this also comes in the ephemera pack. These fun little sequins that are kind of um, iridescent, multicolored. I'm going to set those aside for the second card. So we're putting those over there. Set this behind me. And one last piece of um, material that we're going to need for our card is this length of ribbon. And I believe I said 13 inches. I got more than that. I got 15. As long as you got about 12 inches, you're good. Um, it's for tying a knot. So let's take and grab our seal adhesive and start assembling this card. It's a super quick card. It just uses sentiments for the stamped images. <clears throat> We're going to open this up and I think I'm just going to set that punch on there to help hold it down. We're going to ink this. I'm sorry, ink it. We're going to add adhesive to it and notice I'm adding just seal adhesive going onto vellum. It's fine. It's the back of the card. Okay, so you don't have to worry about um, the adhesive showing through. It will on the back side, but it's the back of the card. So I don't really care. <laughs> if you care, then you can do um, the next kind of adhesive trick that I'm going to show you next. Okay, so I'm just lining again this up on my grid paper. And I'm going about <clears throat> an eighth of an inch away from the bottom of my card. I noticed that my... Um, vellum is slightly narrower than my white cardstock here. So I could take my trimmer and trim that up, or I can use my paper snips and trim. I know I'm going to use my trimmer because <laughs> I'm getting old. And I think if I do one fell swoop slice here, it's going to go a lot better. Wish me luck, you guys. Oh, yeah. There we go. I hope I have a clean blade. If you don't have a clean blade, we could get some fraying and then we're gonna have to use our scissors anyways. Oh, good, I did it. <laughs> oh, there's a little bit of fraying. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Guess I need to change that blade. <laughs> That's okay, that's okay, we're moving on, Rachel. They know, they know what you're trying to do. Next, we're going to take this piece and we're going to add some adhesive to the outer corner here and here. And for this, um, this one here, this gold one, we're gonna line it up so that we're, we, here, I'm gonna do it first and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so can you see, I've got it lined up so that I have my, um, go down just a little bit, Rachel. Maybe not, put it against the vellum. That's better. Okay, so you can see what I did here. I just attached those little ends to the back side, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one, trying to kind of make it equal, balanced out. So yeah, they don't have to be um, hexagons. They can be a six-sided shape that's not a perfect hexagon, right? Okay, so that's ready to add, and that's gonna be added with some dimensionals. So I'm gonna go ahead and just prep that piece. I'm gonna put dimensionals right over where that adhesive, oops, maybe I went a little too far over. <laughs> Don't go too far over, Rachel. Okay, so now I've got a dimensional there, and I've got one here, and that will help to hold the ends of that fun gold piece. We're also gonna put one there and put one there just for balance and make it easier to add. All right, next, 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 we're gonna pull out the, what are we doing, Rachel? Oh yes, we're gonna pull out a different adhesive. So we're gonna move away from the seal adhesive now and we're gonna bring in the silicone um, sheet. I call it silicone mat. Um, and we're gonna put some of our glue in the, oh, you can't see that in the upper corner 
So we've got a little smudge of uh, multi-purpose liquid glue on there. And we're gonna grab a sponge. So um, just making sure I have all my tools here. There we go. So we're gonna sponge and you can get like a, we used to have sponges. You can get sponges or you can use a dauber, um, but I would say get a sponge because the daubers are more expensive. Get some sponges at like a dollar store, on Amazon, wherever. Let's go ahead and tuck in and adhere this set of leaves. I'm gonna actually trim off the end a bit here so we don't have as long of a stem. Okay, and we'll just flip that over onto our mat, add a little bit of adhesive right behind it. Pull this up, tuck it in. So there's one part of our card. Now we're gonna to go to the front part. And because this is going to show on this side, we don't want to use the seal adhesive or we will see these little strips here, which you can, you can definitely, you can definitely see those little strips of adhesive on the back. Kind of gross, right? So let's go ahead and add our sponge Don glue. And you don't even have to do it everywhere, just enough to get the surface um, sticky a bit. And we'll close the card and we'll line it up. So we're doing the um, inside layer first and then the outside layer goes on over the top of what we can see through. We can see that white layer, right? This piece here, you would think, oh, let's tuck that in, except you're gonna see the tuck in part there. So we're not gonna tuck it. Instead, we're gonna use that last bit of adhesive on here and we're just gonna put it on top. And you can see the gold leaves that are already through there. So we're just gonna put that on top like so, so that we can see all those leaves all the way through. Now when this dries on here, just take some, some tape, like masking tape. I use packaging tape um, and I just grab, I just clean it off by sticking it on there. It grabs the sticky parts and, and peels it up. It's awesome. Peel the backings off of this and we're gonna stick it down. <laughs> Shirley is feeding her dog. She's gonna watch it later. <laughs> I just caught your comment, Shirley. How are you? <laughs> and now we're gonna put this down on here, centered, centered and in the middle, just like our sentiment here is centered and in the middle. And our last step is to take our ribbon. Oh, here it is, our ribbon. And we're gonna open this up, put it in here. We're gonna tie it in a knot. I do not stick my ribbon down when I'm tying my knots. I know some of you do, but I like to be able to shift my ribbon where I want it to go. So I'm tying my knot. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of curve my card out a little bit and I'm gonna shift this so that the knot is hovering right over the top of the middle where my leaves are. I'm gonna trim it with my other scissors. There it is. Trim, trim, and then at this point, and especially on this card, I think because it's a little more slippery of a surface, I didn't write this on here, but glue dots are a good thing to add to the center of your knot, or underneath the center of your knot. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that on there, and what I'm doing is I'm rolling it a bit onto itself, so it's kinda like, um, instead of being like this, it's like that, okay? And that way it definitely won't show through. And there is that finished card. It's got a lot of wow to it because it's got some gold accenting. The paper is nice and bold. Um, the vellum just adds for that bit of beauty to the card. So vellum cards, really fun to make, vellum-based cards. But just remember the um, scoring tips that I gave you because you really, you want your card to last a while, right? So, oh, thanks you guys. Okay, second card. Second card is coming in now. We're gonna bring in our basic white card stock, which is thick. I'm gonna zoom out just a tad here. And we're going to cut our card base. So our card stock is eight and a half by 11. I wanna cut it in half this way. So half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. We're gonna open up the arm, go to the four and a quarter inch mark on our trimmer. Make sure that this edge is right up to there. And I like to go from the bottom up because I'm pushing against where my cardstock is supported. 
and I'm slicing. Save that, you're gonna need that too. Turn this way, half of 11 inches is five and a half, so we're gonna bring it to the five and a half inch mark now, and we're gonna use the light blade, which I've marked as scoring blade, and we're just gonna press right through there. You can press harder on this cardstock because it's thicker, um, and it's cardstock, so give it a good press. We'll bring in our bone folder again, and we'll just make sure that that crease is, is nice and crisp. The, the flatter it lies, the easier the cardstock is to work with. Let's bring the trimmer back in though, because now we need some pieces, and I wanna make sure I'm trimming this right. Yes. So we need some pieces that are one and a quarter inches by the width of the card. The width of the card is four and a quarter. It's already that width here. So we just need to rotate it this way. And we're gonna go to, we're gonna use this side of the trimmer over here, the measurements over here, because that actually goes up to one and a half. And we're gonna go to the one and a quarter inch mark. And we're gonna slice. And we're gonna lift it up again. And we're gonna slice. And some of you have commented on the, um, this, this thing being hard to pick up. It's meant to be that way because um, it's got these little knobs. Um, actually, the knobs are here on each end. And that helps to hold the arm of your trimmer or the, the, this part of your trimmer. It helps to hold it in place when you have tipped it to its side to travel with it. We're gonna cut four of those. So we need one more. And we haven't quite used up a full quarter of our cardstock. So really, for making one of these cards, um, except for the scrap piece that I'm gonna need in just a minute here, for making one of these cards, you can get one card out of three quarters of a card uh, piece, sheet, sheet of card stuff. But now we need um, a scrap for our sentiment. And in fact, uh, see, I should have used that wiser. I probably could have gotten two out of there. <laughs> we'll just use this. So we're gonna take, and we're gonna do that same technique but we're gonna use our Stamparatus. We're pulling in a tool called the Stamparatus. I think I may have used this last week or the week before maybe, maybe it was the week before. Um, I'm just gonna put an ink pad down here to help support this. And I want to stamp my sentiment. Where did it go? Oh, it's in the box still. So I'm gonna stamp my sentiment, sentiment that says, hey there. Um, and we're just gonna do that. I've got my Stamparatus set up here where I've got um, the base, and then I've got my grid paper. I've also added, and I should probably put this in the description of my video. This I love, it's just an extra magnetic sheet and just lifts it up a little bit more for me so it's easier for me to get a good impression when I stamp. So I think I wanna just stamp it in, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna stick that in the corner there. I'm gonna stamp it right about there so I'm using just the corner of my scrap. Move this up a bit here. So now that I kind of know where I want my stamp to go, I'm going to lift it up with this plate. Okay, and now I can take my ink pad. I'm gonna use the Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and I'm going to ink it up like this. Don't drop your trimmers. The arms do break and they don't sell replacement arms. Oh my gosh, did that happen to you? Procrastination, I love your, I love your name. Love it. So we're gonna stamp that down like that. And the one thing that I'm really wanting on this card is a really bold black. So unless your ink pad is really juicy, you may want to ink it again and stamp down one more time in, in the same spot which is the beauty of the Stamparatus. Now it does have magnets. It comes with two magnets, which I've wrapped with tape. One of mine broke because they're really strong. When they come together, they can break each other. Um, so keep them far apart from each other if you can, kind of like kids that fight. Um, so <laughs> what you can do is make sure that your paper is staying in place by magnetizing it in place. But my paper was stuck in the corner of this so I knew that it wasn't going to move. The next time I use it though in this video I am going to use the magnet. We're going to take that hay out of there because we don't need it anymore. We're going to punch it like this making sure it's positioned upright and we'll save that piece. This scrap can now go in the back. We need um, strips 
We need our strips next. And we're actually gonna, you know what? Let's set this aside. We're not gonna do it quite yet. I wanna add some color to the strips first. So let's just set that aside. Let's keep the pink in here. Let's bring in Granny Apple Green and Mango Melody. I am wearing Granny Apple Green today. It might look brighter on the camera, but I am wearing it today. All right, two more stamps that we need. We need this one. We need this one. I'm gonna take the rest of this and put this back here. All right. Okay, next, 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 next. Let's bring in these strips. So these strips and blending brushes. Um, I'm gonna take my little blending brushes out of my holder that I got from the Country Hive. I love this holder. Um, we're gonna grab our Mango Melody one. I like to label mine. <laughs> you, can, you can just use orange with orange inks, um, green with green inks, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I'm kind of picky about that. So I like to use just one color for my blending brush. And then I don't have to clean them off and wait for them to dry. Yeah. We're gonna come in with color from this side out to this side. So it's gonna be darkest here and it's gonna come out and kind of like a sun, like as if there's a sunshine here, okay? So we're gonna go here and just kind of build the color out. So I want it nice and dark on the right side and lighter as we zoom out. I'm gonna add a little bit more color. You need to get one of those. <laughs> um, oh, and the name of the punch is the tailored tag punch. Sorry about that. All right, so we're going here. Are you talking about the Stamparatus? The Stamparatus is an awesome tool. So as I come further to the left, it's getting lighter and lighter because my color comes off of the blending brush the most intense when I first start the circular pattern. And you can see that already. Yep. So that one's done. Now let's go ahead and do another color. Let's take our green and do that next. So I've got my green blending brush. Yay! And we're going to grab another strip. And this time we're going to start from the upper right corner and come downward. Okay? <laughs> All right. We're going to go this way. like that. So the color is getting lighter from that upper right hand corner. Darkest in the upper right, lightest as, as it comes out and away. And don't be afraid to go right to the edges, but I just, I want you to try to focus on keeping your darkest color in one spot because it gives that gradient look, right? Okay, that's probably good. So that one's done. And then the last color that we're going to do is the pink one. Set that in my holder. Polished pink. So Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody, and Polished Pink are the colors I'm using. I love it. You guys are talking about your cats. My cat is upstairs. He's not lying on my lap. <laughs> I love it. This is fun. Um, knitting socks while watching. This is great. And Mary's cat is fighting for the computer. <laughs> You guys, seriously, when I read these afterwards, I am cracking up on, on a lot of things that you guys share with me. This one is going to start from the lower right now and come up and lighten as we go up and away from the lower right-hand corner. <laughs> I do. I love, I wish I could actually be in on all the conversation, but I can't. Otherwise, you guys would be like, Rachel, just move on. Okay, so I've got that done. <laughs> Live people should not be responding to every single comment. Did you know that? It's true, even though we want to. So there's our fun little burst of color that's kind of starting in this little area. All those colors are kind of bursting outward, right? Very fun. Now let's bring in this here again. And we'll grab an ink pad again. And we're gonna set this up. We're gonna use just a little bit of adhesive. I'm making sure that's in the upper right-hand corner, right? And I'll move that there. And their grid paper is gonna guide us. So we're going to put just a little bit of adhesive, tiny, tiny bit, 
if I can get it to come out, just a tiny bit of adhesive. Can you see how much I added? Uh, probably not. Oh yeah, there we go. It kind of flashed in the light. So we're going to add just a tiny bit and we're going to stick it down. Um, I think I want it to come as far away from this upper corner as possible though so that we can um, we can what am I doing here oh yeah I know um, so that we can make sure that it doesn't have like an, an issue with being not being able to stamp down all the way and I'm re I'm kind of separating them by an eighth of an inch because that's how I'm gonna put them on my card and do you see that isn't that fun Sometimes stamps just stick to everything. So that's gonna get stuck here. Okay. And we're gonna lay down our magnet on top of them all like this. Okay. Um, I might not be able to get this whole thing in there. But that's okay, I'm gonna angle it this way. So the first stamp image, I'm going to put down, I think I'm gonna put it down maybe like right around here. That looks good. So there, right about there. So I'm going to pick up my stamp. I'm going to ink it up. Sorry about any movement of the camera. Stamp it down. I know it's not as dark as I want it. Can you see that? There's like lighter and darker areas. So we want to we want to bold that up a little bit more. We want to darken it up. We want to bold it up. We're going to darken it up. Hey, I think it was last week someone said, and it wasn't even in the live, um, it was on a post that I did about my procedure, which I don't have results for right now if people are, if, if any of you have been asking because you watched my live last week, which was on a Tuesday, because I had to have a procedure done. It's called a Bravo test. Um, I don't have acid reflux, but I have this 16, 17 years worth of constant burping issue that goes on. <laughs> We're going to do this one more time because there's still some spaces that didn't get inked. Um, but somebody posted a reply. Oh my gosh, I have to do it one more time. Posted a reply to um, when I commented about it and she said, oh, and I can't remember her name now. I'm feeling so bad. I'm like, remember her name, remember her name. But she said, you swallowed a spy. And so I've been singing the song, I am an old lady who swallowed a spy. <laughs> I'm singing it all the time now because I did. I'm an old lady and I swallowed a spy. It's, it, this is this little device that, that monitors what's going on in your esophagus. The next stamp. Now you can clean it off if you're worried about it. I am going to try to do this without it moving. I'm going to lay this down onto my card again in a new spot. And I'm going to try to do it without shifting it because it's got ink on it. See, it has ink on it. And we're going to darken it up a bit more in that spot. <laughs> I would love to hear from anybody who has, uh, there, there was actually one person who told me she had a burping issue too. They discovered that her stomach was above her esophagus. My uncle had that. So I believe that there's something hereditary going on with my issue, but my stomach is not above my esophagus. I do know that. It's just crazy. It's crazy what happens inside the body. You can't really pay attention to it, right? Because it's something you can't see, but take care of yourselves, you guys. Okay, this one's going to come down and go like that. <laughs> Again, if you want to clean them off in between to make sure that you don't accidentally, um, you know, lift it and drop it, Feel free to do that. I just don't have time to do that because I want to share as fast as possible. Stamp. And one more time should do it. And stamp. Okay, we've got that done. Yay. So now I can take my magnet off. I'm going to pull these off, put them off to the side. And we're going to bring in one more, this strip here. And let's just pull this piece off, set it somewhere where it's going to get cleaned off. Eat your ink to clean it off, because where's my other white one? <laughs> I have one more white one. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> um, my stamp, that's what I need next. Okay, that's what I was, I knew I was missing something. So we can, let's bring this one up a little higher. 
And we want it to stay in place because we don't want it to move on us. And I'm gonna put this magnet on this side. Okay, so this stamp is gonna get positioned right about there. Okay, it's clean. I can position it. I know where it's gonna go. And I pick it up. And now we can go ahead and ink and stamp. And I want it bolder, so we're gonna ink again and stamp. Love it! I love the stamp on the jig. Okay, we can clean that up. I do have, the, it comes with two plates, by the way. So if you want to have like your leaf image on one and your other image on the other, you know, you can do it like this. Uh, and you can even flip them around. You can use the flip sides. It's awesome. There's a lot of fun tips and tricks with the Stamparatus. In fact, when this first came out, I participated in a blog uh, um, a blog hop that included how-to videos um, that was promoted by Stampin' Up. So if you want to, you know, scroll back into a bunch of videos, I have one on making some fun multiple treats for a summer party. It was fun. Okay, we're going to open this. We're going to take our blending brushes that we've already used, and I'm peeking at my one that I finished. <laughs> And we're just gonna come from this little area of the card and kind of blend up. I'm not inking them again. I want just the residual color that's left on them because it's light enough where it's gonna make me happy. Um, if you want it bolder, you totally could ink them up again if you wanted to, but I don't want them bolder. I want the colors to be very subtle, very light. So there's that, just a touch of color on the inside. This piece here is going to get added by going like this. And I think I have it about an inch from the bottom. So I'm going to use my grid paper again. I'm going to count up four squares because each square on my grid paper is worth a quarter of an, quarter of an inch. And there's where that piece is going to go. Oh, it's kind, of, it's kind of tilted, Rachel. Is it tilted? Or is it just your eyes? That's good. That's good. Okay, next crease this one more time. We're going to add these guys on there and we're going to add the green one on the bottom first and build up from there. Super easy fun card you guys. It just takes a little bit of time to add the color to the strips but such a stunning result. So I'm going about a half an inch now from the bottom and we're going to space them about an eighth of an inch apart. So we're going about this far and sorry i've been zoomed out for a while haven't i <laughs> oh stamp a jig did i say stamp a jig earlier i meant to say stamparatus because beth just brought out i use my stamp a jig all the time um yes that was a great tool too um great for stamp positioning i used it all the time as well in fact i still have it did i say stamp a jig i do that a lot i meant to say stamparatus <sighs> sorry if i did the wrong thing there Okay, we're going to stick that on there. And then this piece is going to come in, but I want it to really stand out. So my next trick is to take this and punch some black from my scrap. Oops, wrong scissors. Don't use the one with the ribbon on it, Rachel. There we go. Now we're going to turn it over. We're going to add some adhesive in the top and bottom sections. We're going to grab our white and stick it onto our black so that there's just a little hint of, um, of the edge there. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. And make it equal, whatever you do to one side, do it to the other side. And then this piece will come up onto dimensionals. Remember I said that other section of the ephemera pack we're gonna bring back in. So we're gonna do that at this time. Um, one of the tools that you don't need to have, but it's a very nice luxury item, is called a take your pick tool. So I'm going to bring that in. We use that to add the glue dot, um, but we're going to add our, oh, that's fun. Um, we're going to add our little embellishments because this card needs to look, I mean, it really doesn't have to have any more. It's so pretty by itself, but I think that these little guys here are kind of fun to stick on. 
like that. So those are those sequins again. And one more down, maybe like around there. Okay, just a little sparkle. Love it. It's so fun. Isn't that fun? So I have finished cards here. I did I just did that one a little bit bolder on the pink, didn't I? I'm gonna open, you know what? I like the inside of this one better though. Open that one up so you can see those at the same time. Now we'll zoom out a bit. I'm gonna show you some more cards here. And we have to do prize drawings and give away prizes. So don't leave me yet. Uh, by the way, all these cards do fit in our medium whisper white or basic white envelopes. Whisper white, that's an old color. So here's this card and the other one, which I don't wanna stress out too much by opening up, but there's that one. So pretty. And then I have some other cards. So I want to admit to you that this card here was actually influenced by a card that I tried to case from Gina K. So Gina K um, had uh, a card on her Instagram recently that had these beautiful butterflies. I know she used masking instead of the, the, um, the technique that I did, but I did not have good masking tape or whatever for this. So I just took and grabbed a piece of um, rectangular white cardstock, started in the middle, sponged it going outward so that the center of it was the darkest and it eventually just kind of went out into like this oval pattern. Then I cut it into four sections and I used one section here. Then I did the same thing with another color. I used a section there, there, there. And I came up with four different cards um, because of course I have four pinks. I have a, four, a pink here, a pink here on another card, a pink here on another card, a pink here on another card to make that full piece that I originally started with, right? Then you take and you just stamp them separately or you can mash them together and stamp them. But um, with Gina Kay's card, uh, she had the masking tape, like there was probably a tape running through there. She, she then covered it, um, uh, covered the sides that she didn't want to have showing and then um, did her sponging or blending, right? And then she stamped and all of these pieces just looked like separate little pieces, but they were connected because um, of the, the, the mask technique. Now mine, you can see there's a little bit more separation because you can see the shadow of the, of the layers, but I wanted the same kind of look. Anyway, so that card here that I saw, and to totally kind of different with the sentiment here, but I just love the look of her card so much that I was playing around with it, and I did one like this where I positioned all of those pieces on my grid paper so that they were connected with an eighth of an inch away from each other and then stamped them all down. Um, so that's how I did that one, similar to the way I did these leaves here. And then this one was another one like the butterflies where I stamped them all separately, all separate pieces and then just kind of puzzle piece them together. And then this was one that actually turned out <laughs> And I could have shared this one with you, except the first time I tried it, I had all my leaves coming from the middle and it looked dorky in my mind. I ended up throwing the pieces away. <laughs> and that's when I went to this design instead. So yes, I was totally inspired by Gina K. Card um, for, that, for that there. Um, and then ended up my last card making, going back to her card again, like her, her style. So that was, that was what I was going to um, do. It worked. It worked the second time. Right, Teresa? Teresa was here with me that day. Yesterday. It was yesterday. <laughs> so let me just put these out there too so you can see them. I do have photographs of, um, oh, let's see. Let's just put them up here maybe. Can't really see them. I do have photographs of all of these cards in the blog post, even these four last ones. I don't have explanations for them, but hopefully the way I explained them made sense to you. They're all different punch pieces. I stamped and embossed with white embossing powder, um, black ink on all of them, same colors, except I did add in a purple, which was the Highland Heather. And I think that's it. So, um, Hopefully you had fun. Okay, we have prizes. So I'm going to pull out the prizes for today and um, then 
Trisha is going to work her magic and grab a couple winners from the commenters. So if you haven't commented yet, do so now. And let's go back to last week though and share um, the prize winner that we had from last week. The prize winners last week got a pack of the Happy uh, Sunshine and Rainbows designer paper, which you can get for free uh, with a $50 order. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these cards off to the side, bring this in. Let me get my computer pulled up here to the right spot. And, oops, click off of that. Priscilla Setiawan? Setiawan? Setiawan. Setiawan. I don't know. I hope I'm saying it right. I used to be a teacher, so to me, trying to pronounce people's names is like a, a goal. I want to do it right. So Priscilla Setiawan, tell me if it's right. It might not even be that way at all. It might be Setiawan. I don't know. <laughs> But congrats. Reach out to me, um, Priscilla, at my email address, stampyourartout at comcast.net, so that I can get your prize to you. If you are someone who lives outside the US, I will send you a tutorial bundle for free. And it could be this one if you wanted to pick that instead. In fact, anytime that we do a prize, if a tutorial bundle is more up your alley than the actual prize I have, that's totally fine with me. It saves me on postage. <laughs> So that's always an option. Okay, now I'm going to go back to looking at comments um, because I'm going to bring in the prizes that we can. Oops, let's pull this away. Actually, I'm going to bring it back to my desktop. So the prizes today, all the three winners. So the two we draw today and the one we draw next week, um, you're going to get a blending brush. They usually come in a pack of three, but I took the two extras out of all of these. And then you're going to get your choice of just leftover things that I have sitting. These are all in new condition, never used. I have a packet of gingerbread and peppermint acrylic shapes. A packet of, what, what color is this? Um, seaside spray blends. It's a retired color. These are both retired. These are stamp sets that didn't get claimed from last week. Um, fun stuff though. This is more of a masculine one. This is more of a um, awards kind of stamp set. And then I have a roll of this ribbon. <laughs> My favorite ribbon. And the winners are Debbie Morrow and Kathleen Stevens. Congrats. Make sure that you too reach out to me. Tell me which one of these items you want in addition to your blending brush. Again, if you don't want uh, the actual prize, I am totally fine with giving you a tutorial instead. In fact, let's go to my website right, right now. Um, I'm going to show you where those tutorials are just because I did a whole new uh, little setup for my tutorials. So if you go to shop, so once you're at stampyourartout.com, this is where you can find my blog, website, all kinds of information like paper pumpkin information and stuff like that. Just click on any of these menu bars, but under the shop menu bar uh, menu, there is tutorials. And then under that, oh, you can't see it because my head's in the way. Hang on. Under that is another menu, tutorials, tutorial subscription, and my tutorials account. So when you purchase tutorials from me now, you can actually create an account and you can access past tutorials that you purchase in this little store area that I set up. So you can't purchase past ones if you purchased them from me before and I've had to email them to you. Um, but if you purchase this way and they come to you automatically, uh, like right after you buy them, then you can access those again in my new little tutorial store. It's so fun. So um, the subscription, by the way, is ended. So don't click on that because you're not going to find anything that you can do there. But if you click on tutorials, you can go here and you can see they're all sorted by the latest. This is the newest one. It's the February bundle for Artfully Composed. It's $15 if you purchase it from me in the US. If you are one of those um, people watching but you have another demonstrator that does the um, all-star tutorial thing with me, please purchase from them. Support your demonstrator that you're already going through. But there is where it is if you're interested. Uh, what else do I want to tell you about? We have a new collection of products. They're called the All Together Collection. Um, do I have them in front of me? 
you know what? I'm over on, over on time. You'll want to check it out. Go to any of my blog posts and check it out. Next week, I'm going to be sharing the All Together collection of couple cards made with that. And so you'll want to come back for that. And I think that's it. So I'm going to let everybody go. I'm so glad that you joined me today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your comments. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>